So I've divided this session into four parts, uh, depending on the long bone anatomy that we see. First is the marrow, that's mainly in the diaphysis and the metaphysis. Then we extend to the ex uh, at the edges to see the growth plate and the physis. Follow it up with the epiphysis and the apophysis, and if time permits, look at the coalitions. Coming to marrow, it depends mainly on proportion of fat, how it would appear on MRI. So it is assessed mainly on T1 images, and if and yellow marrow is bright, that is hyper intense on T1 because it has more of fat, and a normal red marrow is usually equal or slightly brighter than the skeletal muscle. So let's look how the marrow grows from a red marrow into a yellow marrow on T1 images. So the first image we see that this is entirely iso intense or slightly brighter than the adjacent muscle, that's the red marrow. As the child grows like an infancy, adult infancy age group, uh, we see that it is slowly being replaced with fatty tissue, fatty marrow, that is why it is becoming brighter. It is even more brighter or hyper intense on T1 images at around six to 10 years of age. And then at adult age group, it is completely white, that is bright, that is the fat marrow that has replaced the red marrow entirely. So let's look at first case. So it's a five-year-old child with recurrent infections, has weakness, pallor, and tenderness of lower extremities. And when you look at the T1 image of a five-year-old and compare it with this patient, we see that it is diffusely hypo-intense on T1. So this looks, it is darker than the muscle, so it is not red marrow, it is something that has replaced or infiltrated into the normal fatty marrow. So this is a fluid sensitive sequence wherein we see edema that is diffusely involving the metadiaphysis, also the epiphysis. This is the normal T1 of a five year old child and you can compare it with this patient and you can see how the fat is replaced with an abnormal tissue that is there or abnormal cells. This hypo intensity is darker than the adjacent skeletal muscles and therefore we see that this is not red marrow but it is something that has replaced the fat inside and this is a case of marrow infiltrative disease that is an ALL. Coming to the next example, we look at this again, this is an 18 year old patient and this marrow, fatty marrow is replaced by hypo intensity on T1 images. But if you appreciate this T1 hypo intensity is not darker than the muscle, rather it is equivalent or slightly brighter than the adjacent muscle. And that is why it is, it is the red marrow that has reconverted or recome, uh, replaced the fatty changes over there. And we see this common in sickle cell anemia, hemolytic anemias, or stress due to chemotherapy. On the spine images, this red marrow is equal to the disc signal. And that is why we call this that there is red marrow replacement that has happened. And this is how a normal 18 year old or 15 year old MRI should look like. And this is the T1 of a patient. So this is an example of red marrow hypoplasia in any of the hemolytic anemias. Summarizing the marrow changes, any deviation from the normal pattern at that particular age and that site of bone. Replacement of yellow marrow with red marrow that we see in red marrow reconversion states in which on T1 images, the signal intensity is brighter than the muscle or adjacent disc. If it is darker on T1 images than the adjacent muscle or the disc, then it is a marrow replacing disorder, marrow infiltrative disease like uh, lymphoma, leukemia, etc. So just the last slide on marrow. That's the normal marrow in, around, in adolescence. It has been replaced in this, it, it is iso intense, so slightly brighter than the adjacent muscle. Therefore, it's a red marrow reconversion. And in this, there is darker than the adjacent skeletal muscle on T1 images, and that is marrow infiltration. Coming next to the physis or the growth plate. So growth plate thickness is usually constant before the onset of maturation. And there is no interruption across the entire length of growth plate unless maturity, unless this uh, closure has begun. It is assessed better on the fluid sensitive, that is T2 fat set or stir images. And as the mature, as it starts closing, the hyper intensity decreases and it proceeds in a particular sequence. And after the closure, it may leave behind a physial scar. So this is the normal physis on a fluid sensitive sequence. You see the trilaminar appearance. There is this T2 hyper intensity that, that we see. And even in a six year old or 11 year old, the width or the uh, size of the physis is almost e similar. Once it starts to close, the T2 hyper intensity wears off and the physis size goes on decreasing. And if you see the physis is contiguous, there is no interruption between the uh, hyper intense line. So let's look at the second case. It's a 10 year old kid with limb length discrepancy and a vague history of childhood trauma. 
So when you look at this physis on a fluid sensitive sequence, there is this abrupt interruption of the growth plate with a, with a discrete physial bar closing it over here. So that's the typical physial bar that we see whenever there has been an old history of trauma or infection. The normal physis, as I showed earlier, should have looked contiguous and this T2 hyperintensity. However, in a patient, there is this interruption which is abrupt and there is a bar or bony outgrowth that is closing the physis over here. So this is a, of a growth plate irregularity or a physial bar. Uh, one point of, uh, one caveat to this is whenever you see periphysial edema around the knee joint, this is also called as a phobe zone, which is seen when the uh, growth plate is closing. So that is just a normal variation and should not be interpreted as an abnormality. This is an, another example wherein the physis looks normal on the medial side. However, there is a transphysial spread of osteomyelitis and it is better seen on the fluid sensitive sequences. So again, there is interruption and breach of the normal physial length. Coming to this third uh, example, there is, this is the Sufi uh, slipped upper femoral epiphysis. That's the normal physis on the right side. Whereas on the left side, it is widened and irregular. Uh, this is the slip stage. This is the pre-slip stage. This is the slip stage, wherein as Sir showed in the previous x-rays, uh, the Klein's line doesn't intersect the physis on the medial aspect. Like the physis is slipped medially. Uh, this is an advanced wherein the physis, the epiphysis is completely displaced medially. So summarizing the growth plate, any deviation from the normal pattern of closure due to prior trauma or infection, if there is any widening of the growth plates, as we saw in the case of Sufi, if there is an abrupt or an irregular breach in the contiguity of growth plate, then all these would fit into an abnormal physis that is there. Let's look at the third example, uh, third section, that's the epiphysis and the apophysis. So normal epiphysis has a peripheral hyaline cartilage with a growing secondary ossification center. Uh, center. Uh, irregularity and the apophysis fragmentation may be seen even in normal patients unless there is associated edema or localized tenderness. So do not jump to call any fragmentation as osgood schlatter or anything. Unless there is localized tenderness or abnormal marrow edema, then it is pathologic. PD and fluid sensitive sequences are the best to assess these uh, uh, physis and the epiphysis. So let's look how the epiphysis looks as the child grows. At three months of age, this is composed of red marrow, therefore it is ISO intense to the muscle. At six years, there is fatty marrow than the epiphysis, so it's become brighter on T1 images. And at 16 years, there is fused and the apophysis and the epiphysis look similar in intensity to the met uh, metaphysis and the diaphysis. So let's come to the third case. It's a six-year-old boy with a limp and left-sided thigh pain who has a normal serological workup. Uh, so this is the pelvis with both hips, fat suppressed and a T1 image. And you can see that the normal physis on the right side is homogeneous with no edema. But on the left side, there is this discrete double line sign. It is fragmented and loss of fatty marrow and it's also collapsed. So this is in keeping with the case of Perthes disease. So normal epiphysis has this fatty marrow. It has homogeneous in size and without collapse or fragmentation. And the abnormal, abnormal one shows marrow edema with loss of fatty marrow and the fragmentation and collapse in the size of the epiphysis. Another patient which has edema at the olecranon on apophysis, and that's how the normal apophysis should have looked like. But over here, there is tenderness and edema, so this fits into a case of olecranon on apophysitis. Uh, coming to just summarizing the epiphysis and the apophysis part, if it is smaller compared to the opposite side, as we saw in Perthes, then it is abnormal. If there is marrow edema due to Salter Harris fractures, as we saw in this case, or due to infection, osteonecrosis, then it is abnormal. Or if there are osteochondral lesions at the joint line, then it is an abnormal epiphysis over there. So last case, it's a mystery for all of you. Uh, it's a 21-year-old athlete who's presented with medial hind foot pain and localized tenderness at the mid and posterior subtalar joint. This is the x-ray for all the orthopedic surgeons. Uh, and it looks pretty straightforward, especially with the pediatric orthopods in the crowd. But let's move to the uh, uh, MRI picture. And on the MRI, we see that there is marrow edema at the subchondral margin of the middle subtalar joint. We also see there's an extra bony fragment over here. So this, on the non-fat side sequence, this is the bony fragment. This is the middle subtalar joint. And this is the edema around, localized around it. So this is a typical case of Talocalcanal fibrosis coalition. 
how this would look, have looked on a normal, uh, that's the normal uh, fat suppressed sequence. There is no edema at the middle subtalar joint, whereas in our case, there is edema over here. And this is the CT sections of the same patient. So we see that this is the extra osseous part. This is the coalition that is happening. A part of it is fibrous, and this is the osseous part that is there. So coming to just summarizing the coalitions in the end, any abnormal osseous projection or a bony fragment, as we saw, as we see in this anteater sign, that's the calcaneonavicular coalition, and edema at the syncondrosis, synostrosis, or syndesmosis would point towards a coalition.